Hey, so I recently worked on this portfolio website, which actually won a site of the day on awards. Um, I did the Webflow development, so not the WebGL, that was Federico. I'll link to his work in the description. Um, Filippo, the one whose portfolios um, this is, he did the design himself. What we created is super cool sort of Easter egg view on the website that has some information on like, for example, the colors and typefaces and the column system on the site. And today in this tutorial, I want to show you guys how we created this hover effect that kind of follows your cursor as you move around. And if you hover out, it'll move back to the uh, nav link that you set to be active. So I recreated that part of the animation here. And we see that if we're hovering over some elements, the corners basically follow our cursor. But if we hover out, it moves back to the active link to give this really nice sort of current state on the active element. And perhaps it's this technique can be of use for some really cool animations you guys are planning. Um, so let's get into Webflow and see how this was built. Okay, so I have a, well, basically I've got the full structure built. Um, I have a bunch of nav links on the page. Each of them has some padding around it. So we got some nice space between the link content and the corner element. And it has a position of relative so that we can have our nav corners positioned absolute relative to the nav link. Um, the nav corners just is a full width and height wrapper that holds four divs, one for each corner and using a combo class. So for example, this is the top right one. We anchor it to the right corner. So the top right obviously needs to be anchored to the top and right zero. And then it has a border on the top and right as well um, to give the correct styling. So for example, our bottom right one will, ha will not have a top border, but a bottom border and of course the right one. And it's anchored to the bottom right corner as well. Lots of corners, but yeah, that's how this is set up. And the way that we want our animation to work is that on uh, hover and click of, an, of a link element, we want to remove the nav corners from the first link or the one that was active and then just paste it inside the one that we just clicked. And then this has to happen on hover and on click, it has to stay fixed there. Um, this would usually require I think quite a complex interaction, but the GSAP flip plugin makes it really easy to just uh, pull one thing from someplace and then just paste it somewhere else. And it'll take care of the positioning between the two states. And the state is a very important word because all that GSAP needs for this to work um, is the state that we're coming from and the state that we're going to. So let's get animating. Um, I want the first nav link to be active when the page loads. So currently they all have just a opacity of 100, but I want all of my unactive links to be opacity of 50. And then we will create a combo class of is active to the one that is active. And it has an opacity of 100. And then we're also going to create a hover animation. So on hover, I want the opacity to change from 50 to maybe 75. Well, I have to click there. And then we will give this a transition of maybe 300 milliseconds. And then we'll put the combo class of it active. So now we see that once we hover, it changes the opacity from 50 to 75. And then using some code, we will take care of the part that will change it from 75 to 100 and remove the 100 styling from the one that was active before. I hope you're still following along. It's actually going to be really easy. Um, I think this is all we need to do in Webflow. Yes, um, in my page settings, I have linked the GSAP core library with the free flip plugin. And I've also put in a code sandbox script so we can easily write some custom code without having to save and publish here every time. And the first thing that I want to animate or create is that when I click on an element, I give this an active state and remove the active state from the one that was active before. 
So for easy reference, we're going to create some variables for our nav links. So inside of the document, we're going to look for all of our elements with the class of nav link. And we're going to repeat that step. So we're also going to create a variable for the nav corners. And that's going to look for the wrap for the wrapper of the four corner divs. And since that's only one element on the page, we just need the query selector. And now we got these two items saved. And since we want to do stuff on hover and click of multiple links, we're going to create a for loop. So the way that we'll do this is we say for each nav link, we are going to create a function. And inside of that function, we will reference every single link as link like this. Um, so we mentioned that step one has to be to remove the combo class of is active from the one that was active and then add it to the new one. So we're going to need another for loop. So I'm just going to copy this. And then we first create an event listener. So for every single link, we're going to create an event listener and it's going to listen for any click event. And so for each click, I'm going to create a function. Let's see. And then we're going to paste our copied event listener in here because we want to remove the combo class of is active from any link. So for each nav link on click of a link, if you're still following, we're going to go inside of the class list and we're going to remove the one of is active. I don't need the dot here, I believe. So if I now save this and refresh here, if I click this one, it removes the is active uh, class from the one that was there before, but we needed to add the is active class to the one that we just clicked. So inside of our click event listener, after we removed it, so right over here, on this class list, we're going to add the class of is active. Don't, shouldn't misspell it. We're going to save that and refresh here. And we see that we can now add the combo class on the element that we just clicked. Really nice. So that's step one. Now, the part where we're going to animate these corners, moving from one element to the other and being stuck to the, to the one that we clicked. So if we move out, it'll remain on that link. Um, we're going to create another event listener and step one is going to be, let's see, add an event listener for mouse enter. We're going to create a function as follows. And then we are going to reference uh, the GSAP flip plugin. So if we now go into the documents, we see that in the usage tab, I'll link to this in the video description, the step one um, out of the three from the GSAP flip is to uh, get the current state of the element, which is what I mentioned before, that we have to get some information on where these corners are right now. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in here. And so what we're doing here is that we're going to register a variable called state, and it's going to flip get the state, not of is targets, but of our nav corners, which is the variable that we created before. Um, so it now holds information on where these nav corners are. That's step one. Now the second step is going to be on mouse enter, we want to move these uh, corners from the place that it was, so from the state to um, the link. So on this, we're going to append an element. And the thing that we're going to append here is our nav corners. So what we're doing is on the mouse enter of a link, inside of this, we're going to append. So it basically means um, move into. So we're going to move these corners into this um, link. 
So if I save this and refresh, we see that on mouse enter, it's partially working because this step um, was step one out of our documents. Now we're going to make our state changes. In this case, we appended it. We didn't change any classes. And then we can call a flip from. So I'm going to copy this bit. Paste it in here. And so this works like any other GSAP tween. Instead of GSAP, we just call a flip. So it's going to flip from the state, so from the place it was, over a duration. We don't need one second, maybe 0.4. We can remove the bottom part here just over an ease. And if we now save, we see that it is not working. I made a mistake. Ah, I'm referencing uh, my nav corners as the nav corner element, which is the wrong one. I'm targeting this class, but I need to have the one with the S behind it. My bad. So if I now save and refresh, it works perfect. So we see that on mouse enter, it's uh, being appended to the one that we're hovering. Even if I skip some, it works really nice. But we see that even if I hover out over one that's not active, which is in this case, my first link is the active one. Um, the corners are still stuck on the link that we just mouse entered on. So we need to do something on mouse leave. So we're going to copy this event listener paste it below, change the mouse enter to mouse leave, mouse leave. <laughs> um, and then we're going to run another function. So we're again going to have to uh, get the state because we need to find out the information of where it is right now. Uh, so we can leave this bit here. And then instead of appending it to the one that we're mouse leaving from, we are going to have to uh, append it to the one that's active. So we'll have to create a new variable here, which is active link, which is the document dot query selector. And then we're going to look for the nav link with the combo class of is active. And then we're going to append the nav corners to that uh, active link. So if I now save this, refresh here, we see that if I mouse over over this one, but I don't click it, so I don't make it active, it'll animate back to the one that was active. But if I click this, and if I leave it, it's going to be stuck there. So now we have this really nice animation of basically some sort of crosshairs or corners that highlight the one that we're hovering. And when we leave, it's going to move back to the active uh, link. So I'm going to leave this project as a clonable in the description. If you found it useful, I'd very much appreciate if you liked the video, maybe even the clonable. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos. I'm trying to be consistent with uploading one every week. Um, but between client work, this can be challenging sometimes. Um, so yeah, see you in the next video.